I want to talk for a minute about fluid pressure applications and how we calculate fluid pressure on various surfaces. Fluid pressure is a distributed load. It acts over a surface area. And there are three basic things you want to do as you have one of these. Find out what area your fluid pressure acts over. Find out what the pressures are at the boundaries or the borders of your area. Generally, that means you're going to use pressure equals rho GH, especially if you're dealing with incompressible fluids. And then connect the dots to make a load intensity diagram. Once you have that load intensity diagram, you can find the equivalent point load. The equivalent point load has magnitude equal to volume, the volume under the load intensity diagram. It acts at the centroid of the volume, and it acts in a direction perpendicular to the surface area you started with. Bear in mind at all of these points that this stuff leads into equilibrium. We're going to still have the sum of the forces and the sum of the moments in our problems because we're still dealing with statics. As we go along here, I want to look at a couple different kinds of surfaces. The first one is the horizontal surface. If we're just dealing with fresh water surface, here's my tank. I have some surface under there that's 6 meters by 2 meters, and it's at 10 meters down in the water. That's my area. I've identified the area. I want to identify the pressures at the boundaries. So if I look at my four corners, they're all at 10 meters down. So all of the pressures are 10 rho g. That gives me a load intensity diagram that's just a rectangular prism. Because it's the same as you go into the page, we usually treat these as two-dimensional objects like this, so that I have a uniform distributed load acting over the 6 meter length with the 2 meters into the page. So my equivalent point load is the volume of this uh, load intensity diagram. So W is 10 rho g, that's my pressure, times 6 times 2, or 120 rho g in. The center of pressure is where your equivalent point load acts. That's going to be at the centroid of the load intensity diagram. So the centroid of this volume of this thing is going to be in the middle of the plate. One of the things you want to bear in mind is that this, the volume of water, if you look at a column over this plate, the volume of the water would be 10 times 6 times 2. That would be how much water was in a column pressing on that plate on the bottom. This is why we sometimes say that the vertical water pressure is essentially the weight of the water. That would be rho g times the volume. Now, a vertical surface is a little bit different in that it's not a uniform load. So if we look at salt water here, now I have a 4 foot by 5 foot sort of hatch in my tank. This is my area. It's 4 feet by 5 feet. My load intensity diagram looks is no longer rectangular. It's a sort of a trapezoidal prism. But how do you find that out? Ask yourself those same questions. What's the pressure here? What's the pressure there? And connect the dots. So the pressure at A is going to be 3 times gamma. Remember that gamma is equal to rho g. So you're dealing with rho g h is gamma h is 3 times gamma. The pressure at B is 7 gamma. So if I take this as a two-dimensional object, I have this trapezoid or acting over the four feet from A to B. My equivalent point load is the area here, and I can break this up into a rectangle and a triangle. So my rectangle is 3 gamma times 4 times 5. My triangle is 1 half base times height, 1 half times 4 gamma times 4 times 5. And that gives you two loads and where they act. The rectangle will act two feet down because it's a rectangle, and the triangle will act a third of the way up from the bottom, because it's a right triangle. So you'll have 60 gamma here and 40 gamma there. Now, if you want to, you can add this up. You'll have 100 gamma, and will act at the centroid of the trapezoid. Or you can do an equivalent system here so that you can find the centroid of where those two things act. You can also, of course, integrate these problems. This is what you probably learned in calculus. There's no reason not to do this if you want to, if you can figure out what your limits of integration are and everything else. If you know where the centroid of the trapezoid is, etc., etc. Now, what do you do with a slanted surface? With a slanted surface, one of the easiest things to do in statics is to go ahead and resolve it into an x component and a y component. So I want to go ahead and say, what is wx and what is wy? Generally, all roads lead to equilibrium. So we're looking at a situation where we're going to have to do this anyway. We might as well start with it there. Here's my tank. It's 12 meters to the bottom, 8 meters to the top of my slant. And it's a nice 3, 4, 5 angle from A to B. So I'm looking for what these forces are. If I want to later on add them up, I can do that. I know that the sum of these two has to be perpendicular to the surface because the total water pressure acts perpendicular to the surface. 
Let's look first at the vertical pressure, WY. The pressure at A, 8 meters down, is 8 rho G. The pressure at B, 12 meters down, is 12 rho G. So if we took by the principle of transmissibility and slid all those arrows down until they all came down to the bottom, you'd have, again, a nice rectangle with a triangle on the top of it. It's another trapezoid. So WY can be the rectangle is 8 rho G times 3 times 7. The triangle is 1 half 4 rho G times 3 times 7. You know, too, where these act. This rectangle will act 1 and a half meters to the right of V. This triangle will act 1 meter to the right of V. Because these, you know where these, these distributed loads act. You know how they act. That's the WY. WX is the same sort of thing, except the arrows are going in a different direction. At A, I've got 8 rho G still. Pascal's law tells us that the pressure acts the same in all directions. So at A, it's going to be 8 rho G, whether you're talking about 8 rho G down or 8 rho G to the right. At A, that's what it is. At B, I've got 12 rho G. Now, principle of transmissibility. Slide those arrows until they're all lined up. And you have another rectangle and triangle. Notice that this now my area that this is acting over is 4 times 7, not 3 times 7. So my rectangle is 8 rho g times 4 times 7. That's going to act 2 meters up from b. The triangle is 1 half times 4 rho g times 4 times 7. That's going to act 4 thirds of the way up from b. Now, when you're dealing with these with actual numbers in a real problem, you can probably tell me exactly what those values are. But the point is, how do you get them? You find out what your area is. You find out what the pressures are at each of the places. And connect the dots to find a load and density diagram. Now, a couple things I want to just make sure you're, you're focused on. Everything is leading you to equilibrium. So when you get to here, you're going to still sum the forces and sum the moments. So as you're doing that, that's your basic steps. Find the area, find the pressures, connect the dots to find the load intensity diagram. Bear in mind that you can do equivalent systems. Two systems are equivalent if the sum of the forces is the same and the sum of the moments taken at the same point is the same. So you can always come back and say, I only want one force. No, then find the one force. You're welcome to integrate. You're welcome to break these things up into diff two different shapes. You can do these in a lot of different ways. The point is to make sure that you know one way really solidly. The equivalent point load acts at the center of pressure. That's going to be the centroid of the load intensity volume, not the volume of the plate or anything else. And it, bear in mind that this will work for any kind of surface. So if you look at this sort of water trough, this it's sort of a semicircular trough going back into the page, if I look at how the water pressure is acting on the surface, AB, I can do the same thing. I can break it up into WX and WY. WY is going to be the weight of the water acting over the plate. And WX is going to be the same even if it hadn't been slanted at all, just like it was in our slanted surface problem. So from there, you can solve most any kind of hydrostatic problem that you need to. Thanks.